Good morning, everyone. Welcome. With the uh, governor's announcement on Friday, obviously the, the mask rules are adjusting. And so you're welcome, if you are vaccinated, to ditch the mask. You're also welcome to keep wearing it because those who are not vaccinated, the pandemic still is going on. So uh, families who have children or adults that are in the hospital because of COVID that before they got vaccinated, they're still worried. So keep yourselves uh, safe as possible. Those pews in the back half of the church, you'll notice, still have ropes on every other pew, and that is so that those who want some social distancing can have it. And those uh, pews in the front here, where there are no ropes, you can sit wherever you like. Uh, just be courteous of each other. So, um, we're, nobody's asking you to reveal your vaccination status, just so you know that up front. But it is always good to, to keep uh, some Christian charity for each other. Um, the diocese has not made a full analysis of all of this yet, so don't be surprised if things adjust a little bit over the weeks. For instance, today we'll have a procession through the church for the first time in a year. Uh, to, and some things we are not doing yet are sharing the sign of peace or taking up a collection by passing the basket. So those will continue to be as we did last week. The same with communion. The ushers will dismiss in the same order we've come, become accustomed to. Actually, that order works really well regardless, so it works wonderfully. Um, I hope that everyone did get a worship aid. We don't have hymnals in the pews yet, and if you didn't, they're available near the doors. Thank you very much. Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's. I invite you to stand. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Send to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. 
for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were intently looking at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body and one spirit, as you were called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, 
He ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak new languages, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, besides being a feast day that's kind of hard for us to understand, is uh, a mixed day. This is why the apostles ask the Lord before he ascends, Lord, is today the day? Is now the time? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Is the waiting over? And he says, not yet. And he leaves them. And so in the cathedral of St. Andrew, I was there uh, yesterday for the diaconate ordination. Uh, so three guys got ordained transitional deacons. They'll be priests next year if you pray for them. But there's this huge window in the cathedral of the ascension. And it's such a strange thing because you can see how mixed the day is. The Lord is ascending in glory and the apostles on the ground are burying their faces in their hands and they look sorrowful because the Lord is leaving them. But it's also a day of joy because today is the day the Lord Jesus completes his great work of redemption when he goes and is enthroned at the right hand of God. This is like, this is it, you know, this is, now, now, it's, now it's completed. So we live in this between time now, between the ascension, where the Lord has gone to the Father, and the second coming of Jesus when he will return, and then everything will be fulfilled, everything will be completed. 
After the second coming of Jesus, then we, we are looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth where there will be no more sin, no more death, no more sorrow, no more tears. So this, this big window over here, actually, this is an image of the second coming of Christ. Christ is seated in glory. But he's come to divide, to, to divide the sheep from the goats, come to judge the world, and come to establish his kingdom in a definitive way. You might get a feel for how the apostles felt on this day of the ascension if you have ever wondered, if you've ever wished that it wasn't so hard to believe in God. Or if you have ever wished that God didn't seem so distant or so invisible to us. Jesus is taken from us into heaven today, but he told us, I am with you always to the end of time. And it's true, he is still with us, though in a different way than he was before. We can't go visit him in Nazareth. We can't see his face, hear his voice, or feel his hands heal us. But he does speak, though his voice is hidden. He speaks in his church, in the scriptures, in our parents and teachers and priests. He speaks today, but he is hidden. Jesus still works in the world, but his hand is hidden. He works in the charity of his church and most powerfully in the sacraments. Jesus is working, but he is hidden. Jesus is truly still with us, but his face is hidden. He is with us in a real, substantial, permanent way in the great gift of the blessed sacrament. He is always with us, but he is hidden. The good news about the time between the ascension and the second coming of Christ is that it is very temporary. If, I mean, can you imagine if this is all that Jesus wanted to do? I don't think I'd stick around for it. This isn't that great so far. You know, I'll have patience with the world as it is only if this ends someday. The world will not be like this forever. The victory is won, but we are waiting for the final and complete fulfillment. So what do we need to get through this difficult middle time? We want to hear the voice of Jesus. We want to see his face and to know his presence. And without this, there's no way we will last. This is too hard. So we pray for the Holy Spirit, that it will be given to us. The ascension is the day when the church starts to pray because the Lord said, wait for the promise of the Father. You will be given power. He says, wait, wait for the gift. So the church starting today prays intensely for the gift of the Holy Spirit because next Sunday is Pentecost. When the promise of the Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit is poured out in power on the church, the Holy Spirit is the gift for this time of waiting. The Holy Spirit is what makes us able to hear not just the words from the book, not a dead letter, but the voice of Jesus when the scriptures are proclaimed in church. The Holy Spirit makes us able to know the presence of Jesus when we meet him in the Blessed Sacrament. It all comes down to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what we need. So pray, maybe like you have never prayed before, for the Holy Spirit to pour over you and to fill you. In this time of waiting between the second coming of Jesus and the ascension that we celebrate today, it is hard to be a Christian, but we have these two consolations. First, the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that we can see and know Jesus, though he is hidden. And the second, Jesus remains with us in great love in the Blessed Sacrament. He dwells in his churches always. This is why Catholic churches are supposed to be open for prayer all the time. Maybe you can start a habit of stopping in church, if not this one, one on the way home from work or something, just to spend five minutes with the Lord. Otherwise, you will forget. You might think that he has left us. He said, I am with you always. So visit him and love him.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of God for all of our needs, we bring to him the petitions of the whole world. church, that we may continue to proclaim the gospel of our ascended Savior, sharing his message of gladness and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. For our civil leaders, that they work in the service of justice, ever striving toward peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer in the midst of civil unrest and violence, especially the peoples of Palestine and Israel. Let us pray to the Lord. For the oppressed and downtrodden, that they may feel the comforting presence of God, renewing their strength and their sense of worth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from injury or illness, especially those who suffer from COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Beverly Alt and all who have gone before us in faith, let us pray to the Lord. For our parish, that our sharing of our gifts through the Catholic Services Appeal may help bring peace, justice, and equality to the world. Let us pray to the Lord.
Father, when you received your son Jesus as he ascended into heaven, you received us in his human nature. And so we make this prayer, the prayer of your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into heaven, but only say the word.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Okay, uh, there are, I have two announcements. The first one is that uh, you've got your CSA envelopes and things. Please turn those in as quick as you can. I can say this to you without shame on my face because I turned mine in last week. So uh, please go ahead and, and if you need a new one or any info, there's things in the back. The other thing is with the whole mask thing, it'll take some getting used to, so we'll all just be patient. But um, all of you will have to start washing your faces again. <laughs> and, and I promise, I promise tomorrow to start brushing my teeth again. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you for on this very day His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. Amen. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.